poor old senior citizen on a fixed income, and even she who must be obeyed derides me by saying I'm always whining too much, but I can't afford these super expensive boot heater packages even though I do like to get out in the winter and partake in winter activities such as AT, downhill skiing and cross country and even riding my bike and hiking up the local mountain. So my first attempt at making some boot heaters was to take a pair of insoles like this and glue on this type of uh, heating element and then stick that in my boots and then run a long cord down my leg and plug it into a USB power pack. Well, I should have known the USB power pack because it only puts out a limited range of voltage, uh, five, I think five something volts. That's not enough to give you enough heat that you're gonna need when it's minus 20 centigrade. So I got busy different type of plastic insole that works a lot better and takes a, a higher voltage. I believe, if I recall correctly, it's been a while now, uh, you can, the more voltage you put into these, the hotter they get. And I think they can easily take up to something like 12 volts. So inspired by that, I bought some and tried them out. And then I spot welded up my own battery pack, three cells in series. So that would give you 4.2 times three. So what's that, 12.6 when it's fully charged? And um, indeed, this really does work to the point where you can get quite hot, sweaty feet. Uh, so then I came up with this three position switch, which uh, limits the amount of current going to this by cycling the power on and off through different cycles and that seems to work pretty well however in terms of um, prepping you do need to spot weld yourself a battery pack and then you've got to come up with a way to charge it so you need to integrate a bms battery management system into the battery pack that is rated for balance charging those three cells and uh, then you charge it accordingly after you solder in the appropriate wiring harnesses. You end up with this sort of configuration which actually works very well for keeping my feet warm and you put this around your ankle instead of running a line down your pant leg and uh, with the battery pack facing the outside of your leg so that you're not brushing it together it does seem to work fairly well. However, I wondered if there might be a better way uh, to integrate the battery pack. And so then I thought, well, if this is going to be like an end user sort of thing, it would be a lot easier if someone could just take a battery pack that they can insert individual 18650 cells in and put that into the... Uh, holder and go that way. So that's what I went to next as my solution to coming up with a DIY foot warmer kit that actually works effectively. So one of the first things you're going to need is a power source and uh, you're going to need 18650 lithium ion batteries. Well, the good news for those is if you have a local recycling center, landfill, or dump where you can go in and do some harvesting, run down there and grab all the old battery packs that you can find, whether they be from notebook computers or even like this from cordless power equipment because they all contain 18650 batteries that can be harvested usually in these packs which is the same thing where I got these for the same purpose you can uh, take these apart in a vise and you can refer to some of the videos that I'll link down below in the description to see the safe and effective way to do that next you're going to need a way to charge these cells 
and that's where you can turn to your trusty uh, supplier of choice which I suspect would quite often be Amazon and you find some kind of suitable charger you can get either a four bank or a two bank model uh, because you're going to be using three cells then uh, you can either cycle them twice or you can just get the four bank model because I would think that you're going to want to have a total of um, <clears throat> a replacement cell pack in your pocket in order to extend the life if you're going to be out all day so you could end up with uh, needing 12 or even more uh, 18 batteries per day so now you've got a way of powering your foot warmers what do you need in terms of setting all those up well you need the caddy that's going to carry your batteries in it so you've got that <clears throat> you're going to need the footbed that you can put 12 volts into and get a decent amount of heat out of it you're going to need a switch that has three different power level settings on it and cycles the power and if you want more details on how that switch works you can refer to the uh, video I did on the uh, Holmes heated work gloves because they use the same kind of switch system and I think I outline how that thing works from there then uh, you are also going to need holster that fits on your ankle which would be one of these guys because that allows you to uh, insert the battery pack and carry it on your ankle. Some connectors to wrap all this uh, up and put it together so you're going to need male and female connectors and those are going to serve to connect the uh, power source to the footbed and then lastly you will need some wire so that you can get from your ankle into the boot we're going to start our project by preparing some of the materials that we're going to need while we're doing our assembly so first of all I cut a 22 inch piece of braided uh, loom and uh, a 6 inch piece which is going to cover the wires that's coming from the battery pack. Then we need our wires and all these items by the way are what you prepare if you are a one-footed person. If you have two feet then of course you need to double all this stuff. Now we want to take this battery pack and transform it into that battery pack. So in order to do that we are going to need our raw battery pack, the smaller piece of uh, braided wire loom mesh to coat those wires. We're going to need um, a small piece of heat shrink such as that one cut in half and then we are going to need the female DC connector that we're going to solder on to the end and we are also going to need a couple of short pieces of this adhesive dual wall heat shrink because when we shrink it onto here it extrudes uh, an internal adhesive and then keeps everything in place especially this uh, wire mesh loom
The next part of the procedure is setting up the switch assembly. So we're going to need to take two of the positive wires and put them onto the center pin assembly of the male 1.35 millimeter DC connector. And then we are going to solder the negative wire from the silicone switch on to the other connector on there. And then we are going to use a multimeter to check and see which one of these white wires is controlled from the silicone switch, if not both of them. And we're only going to need one. And we found on the first one we did that only one of them was actually active. So I just cut the other one off. And then we will connect the wires, the negative and the positive, to the footbed. Using the multimeter, we determined that one of the, the two white wires was the one that was being switched on and off by the silicone switch. So then I cut the other one off, leaving the good one, which needs to be joined to the negative wire. And then we will put the braided loom over those wires and then we will connect them to the footbed. So what we saw in the sped up section was uh, connecting the battery pack and running through the three different modules and it ran itself up to uh, over 210 Fahrenheit and then I cycled it down to the blue and then the green. And this is carbon felt that um, we've got separating it out and so it's too hot to touch and it's drawing about one and one half to two amps. These are harvested cells. I think you could assume a rating of them of around 2000 milliamp hours. So on the green setting 
you may get about two and a half hours because you're going to be getting somewhere between 15 and 18 watts and uh, on the red setting maybe an hour to an hour and a half it depends again on the capacity of the cells that you're using so if you're going out all day you'd need enough replacement cells in your pack in order to swap those out depending on which setting you're on but consider um, maybe if you're going on green and generally I find that I only need to turn it on when my feet are getting cold so you might even get through a full day with three cells but you should probably have another three in your pack which would mean a total of six extras in your pack unless you're a one-footed person your last task is going to be to sew the silicone switch onto your ankle holster and um, what I like to do is first of all hot glue it into place and then I will ask she who must be obeyed to then sew it on right around there the idea of leaving it just hot glued on will probably end up having that fall off at some point especially when it's cold and there's a lot of movement so don't forget to get that sewn on at some point the recommended procedure for putting the boot warmer into your boots and wearing them will be as follows so you start out by taking the heated footbed and placing it into your boot with the uh, wire side where the connection points are facing down. Note that the battery pack has already been placed into the ankle cuff. Now we recommend using insoles with this and running the wire up the inside or the instep side of your boot. Hold your pant legs up first because this is going to be insulating your batteries. Come around the back of your calf so that the two meeting points are out the front and the wire is wrapped around the back of your calf. Then do up the cup and let it rest on top of your boot. And angle the switch around so that it's facing sideways out the side to make it easier for you to turn it on and off. All right, now you're ready to turn it on. Hold it in for a couple of seconds until you get red. And then I would recommend cycling it down to the green to start with unless it's a super cold day being careful not to hit the uh, silicone switch and changing the setting and now you can just change your settings if you need to turn it on or turn it off or pull the battery pack out and change batteries later if you need to How's that feel? Is it comfortable? She said yes.